Hi guys, welcome to another pickups video. Thankfully, the past couple of weeks have been absolutely great for pickups and a huge variety because I just got back today. I had a Sunday off, which is fairly unusual for me, and yard sale season's kind of starting. I was out for almost five hours going to yard sales all over the place, driving you know, at least half hour away for the farthest one, working my way around, went to a couple thrift stores that finally opened because a lot of stuff here is closed on Sundays, it doesn't open until 11 or 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Got to a couple things there, bought nothing. Was out all morning, didn't buy a single thing. There was nothing that I wanted as a, for the collection. There's nothing that I would think other people would want as a gift. There wasn't even anything that was a reasonable resell or something to trade with other people to add to my own collection. Nothing. Went to about a dozen garage sales and a lot of them was kind of, I stop and I look and it wasn't even any kind of like a box garage or anything. There was nothing at Goodwill or any thrift stores around here. It was a, a dud day, which is really disappointing to have a time off and to go around and put that much effort and pump gas into the car and nothing. But in the long run, it doesn't matter because the past couple weeks were awesome leading up to this, so just one disappointing day, and that's kind of the usual what you have to get used to. Um, some days you're going to be finding great deals, other days are going to be complete duds. And especially around here, it's definitely either or. You, know, you go around sometimes and the only books you find are like left behind and people's old Bible collections and maybe some Amish romance novels and then other times you find some really great stuff. But we'll start off with some things I think I forgot to put in the last one we actually got from last month but uh, didn't quite make it in the video. Might have been when we filmed it. I don't remember sometimes. But we found two vinyl records in the bargain room at Goodwill of Madonna. So we have Madonna, Madonna one here and I'm kind of narrowing down with my vinyl record collection it's not something that I'm not, I'm not a huge music collector and I usually stick to just CDs or some things that I want um, Laserdisc is really the main format that I want the music videos and music concerts and that kind of thing so vinyl is kind of getting down to there to a couple that are on my list and then the occasional if I find some 80s stuff I'll grab it really if it's cheap um, Madonna like a virgin so if, if it's 80s uh, and it's not on my list, I still might grab it anyway just because it's 80s. And of course, a couple CEDs because it would not be 2017 without some CED pickups around here. I really thought that by the end of this year, my CED collection would somewhere be around 30, 35-ish maybe. I'm over 70 already from people giving me them and finding them and uh, just last week put up that other crazy you know, pickups video where I actually left a lot of CEDs because they were too expensive. but never seen them before until a couple years ago and now holy crap they're everywhere who knows what's happening but I added a couple to another really great series the fairy tale theater with Shelley Duvall and Shelley Duvall is a big part of my childhood with a lot of stuff she was in but this especially I remember very fondly and a lot of the 80s actors and stars of the era that were in even like Carrie Fisher Robin Williams that were in a lot of these and it's really cool to see them uh, and Jeff Bridges uh, all kinds of people but Rapunzel and this is one we did not have in the collection that was really cool Rapunzel. I uh, did find a double of one, Goldilocks and the Three Bears, and I wanted to grab it just because it was super cheap and with CED, it's kind of a crapshoot as far as what quality they're in, have they been damaged over the years, have they been played a lot, because it really is a limited play time of these things before they get worn out. So if I do find a double and it's really cheap, just a buck or two, I'll grab it and compare it to a copy I already have and see which one's better, that type of thing. And Jack and the Beanstalk. And this one was actually interesting because uh, these are roughly an hour long, so they're only recorded on one side of the disc. And I thought this one was a dud and completely ruined. I was pretty disappointed when I first put it in. But as you'll see up here, up front here, hopefully it shows up on the camera, right in this corner, it says side two, even though it's facing forward. Um, I actually found out what someone did. Someone apparently must have taken this apart to clean it and put it in the disc completely upside down. Occasionally I'll get it where you, you, know, you slide this thing in and then when they go back to put the movie back in they accidentally put it upside down and put it wrong side up and that's whatever. You can just put it back in and flip it around yourself and that's not the issue with this though. This was the person had actually taken it out so that the actual disc was flipped. So the actual side one of the disc was on the side two side. Is someone had taken it completely out of the packaging and flipped it around and I eventually figured that out thanks to my wife having you know that idea that hey maybe someone took that apart and things are a little messed up and figured it out and got this thing working but yeah at first I thought it was a dud so that was a pleasant surprise. Moving on to um, a kind of odd find, something that's bizarre to find around here and a piece of my childhood that I totally forgot about until I saw it. I'm like holy crap I remember that but there's Trumpelpeter um, and uh, Maxim Moore Heats. This is 
something that I remember from my very young childhood completely in German, German storybook here, but this is something that I saw that and I'm like, I had to have it because I would like very much in the coming years to kind of relearn a lot of German that I have not used in about a decade now. Like when I was a kid, I knew a significant amount of German and was surrounded by that in my life, but it's been so long that I've used it at all, but I'd like to relearn some of it, add that to my list of languages here. And a Buffy the Vampire Slayer, this one's cool, the monster book. So this is pretty neat. Sometimes I don't really like a lot of these season-by-season -season guides of shows. I find that um, it's not quite as informative, depending on the author who really puts it together. But something like this is really cool, talking about all the different monsters in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So this was really cool. My wife was excited to find that. Another thing we got, um, didn't find too many manga finds, but uh, Rosaro plus Vampire. I know this is pretty popular. I've never seen anything about it myself, but when you find manga for less than a dollar, you grab it especially when it's in perfect uh, condition. And we also got, we won an eBay auction. We've been trying to look for some stuff recently to add to the collection and some resell on the side. Trying to find some lots that have a good combination that's a really good uh, deal that we can kind of make our money back and really add to the collection for free that way. And we got that through a lot of Goosebumps books, 49 books, really, really good deal. Added a couple that were really hard to find too. So the Night of Living Dummy 3, all the Night of Living Dummy ones, for some reason, are pretty hard to find compared to some of the other more common ones. And then also this one, Calling All Creeps, I don't know why this one is so hard to find. Some of the last couple ones, once you start getting to the 50s, they, you know, these last couple ones, you think it's so hard to find. I think the print runs must have been much smaller, but finally added one of this. That was in the lot. And a bunch of other ones, we added a couple um, upgraded copies. We found some where that copy was better than the one we had previously. And did some swaps and have a resale pile left over. So that was a good deal. And also, we found a Goodwill, The Simpsons, Season 1. And The Simpsons is really cool in that it's something that I think is very defined by decade. It's changed so much over the years. It's been on so long. It's just not the same show it is at all anymore. And I don't necessarily think that it's a bad show anymore. I've, I've caught a couple episodes the last few years. It's just not quite the same. It doesn't really fit what I like. And I forgot, um, my wife and I were talking, we were watching a few years, how many classic episodes that are really in my memory when I first think of The Simpsons are in just those first couple of years. I mean, there's so many just in that first season. So it's something that I think over time it's more of what is your generation of The Simpsons, depending on when you were born? Now, I was born in 87, so The Simpsons started when I was very, very young, and something that's kind of been there forever. And there's really a generation that ended the 80s through the 90s, through about season 7 or 8, is to me, that, that's, that's my Simpsons. Those are the Simpsons I remember, that's, that's sort of my generation. Those are the seasons that I want, maybe 1 through 7, 1 through 8. And then after that, it's, well, maybe my, my brother, who was born in 96 and grew up with some of the later seasons of Simpsons, that's more his Simpsons. He might be more interested and remember those more nostalgically. So the Simpsons, a show that's been on that long and has changed this much over the years, I think that that's kind of how it's defined. You're either a hardcore fan who just wants it completely, or it's more of a generational thing, a by-decade thing. It's been on so long that which which decade is your decade of The Simpsons? That type of thing. For gaming, found a couple cool pickups here. Metal Gear Solid, I did not have a copy in the collection. The case is a little beat up, but you can replace that. The game's fine. Uh, and this is one that I want to get a disc to play this on my Dreamcast. So that'll be a lot of fun there. I um, added another one to the PC collection with the... Uh, Key right there, the Warcraft 2 Battle.net edition. This brings back a lot of memories. Good to add uh, another piece to the Warcraft collection on PC there. And one that I was on the fence a long time, whether or not I would even bother getting it. I'm not a big fan of the HD collections on 360 and PS3 of uh, older games, usually PS2 games. But this one made an exception just because I wanted a double copy of those games anyway, and instead of buying a double of each, I just bought the HD collection. But Zone of the Enders HD collection on the 360. And to me, I, overall, I like the PS2 versions a little bit better than the HD collection, but it is cool to have, and there is a really cool new opening scene um, that they put together, kind of combining and celebrating the, those two games, and I absolutely love these. I mean, this between this and Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear is easily my least favorite thing Kojima has done. I mean, to me, something like like uh, Snatcher or Police Knots or the Zone of the Enders games, those I like so much more. I you know, like Metal Gear Solid, mostly just the first one, but these are just incredible mech games. And in a, in a weird kind of way, they're almost, you could say, the best Gundam games ever made that aren't Gundam games. Uh, it's really, to me, some of the best of that style of mech versus, say, um, 
the more clunky, more westernized idea of the mechs as just kind of big walking tanks, the more elegant type, fast moving, arcadey action, that type of mech stuff, Zulianders 1 and 2, absolutely amazing. And a game that I bought more a little bit for its bonus content than the actual game, Indiana Jones and the Staff of Kings. And I played a little bit of this so far, and it's not bad, it's a kind of fun adventure game, it reminds me of a little Tomb Raider-y mixed, but the Indiana Jones games have been kind of mixed bags once they've gone into the 3D realm and have adapted that action format. It's been okay so far, I don't mind uh, some of the Wii stuff, I know some people have problems with motion control issues, and um, to me I actually kind of like some of the motion controls in this, I, I think it's, it's done pretty well, it's nothing spectacular, but you can unlock in here the entire DOS point-and-click adventure, Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis, which I have a lot of memories with, and that's really awesome to be able to have that, to be able to unlock that, and like, holy crap, what a bonus! One of the greatest, if not the greatest, Indiana Jones game ever made is a bonus content in this Wii game, so that's pretty awesome. Moving on, though, to what I think are the absolute coolest pickups, and the sort of oddball things that I was talking about. If you are a fan of the 80s, or you grew up in the 80s into the early 90s, you know about the fascination with home video. Before there was digital video, anything like that. Having VHS and Betamax, video cameras, and going around filming everything, and how much of a novelty that was. And you watch even, uh, say, like on Laserdisc, I have a lot of these national park type things and tours, and you see everyone in the background with you know, the Sony Handycams in particular. That was a huge popular format because it used these smaller tapes, it was a little more portable, and it was really cool, but to play them back, to watch them, you could either transfer it to something else, or you could buy these converter VHS tapes where you basically put the tiny tape in the VHS and put that in your VS, uh, VCR. But Sony also, to capitalize on the popularity of the Handycam, released standalone Video 8 players which are pretty obscure and they go for a decent amount of money online. Eventually I'll find one in the wild, but it's not something worth the shipping of those crazy things. But to try and push that technology, they made a move that, in hindsight, it didn't work out at all, but you can kind of see why they did it, because you wanted that to be the format people chose. They pushed for some movie studios, and a lot actually, for a couple of years, it really wasn't very long, started releasing actual movies on Video 8. And here's a picture of one of these next to a cassette and a typical DVD style case. So it's really, it's a complete movie on Video 8. There really were no benefits to these over VHS or Betamax, um, especially just in the pre-recorded format. It's just kind of a cool, unique piece of history. And just having, it's just, just kind of cool having these little cassettes. And there's a whole movie on there. So Beverly Hills Cop and uh, The Search for Spock, Star Trek 3. So a cool one there. Just one of those video formats I want a couple examples of. And if you're a fan of my channel and you've been watching, you know, of course, CED I'm a pretty big fan of. It's kind of a crappy format overall, but it's interesting to collect. There was a Japanese variant that was pushed primarily by JVC. They did some great improvements to the technology and released video high-density disc, uh, VHD. And it did a little bit better in Japan compared to CED in North America. It, again, wasn't a super successful format, wasn't really dominant in any form but it was a bit of a cult hit. It had a very devoted following through, even through the 90s. And there was a lot of cool stuff released on there. There's even some a lot of Jackie Chan movies, a lot of anime was released on there, even some Studio Ghibli films, all kinds of stuff. And I was able to get two Japanese VHDs. How awesome is that to add to the, the you know, needle vision you know, formula here? These work a little bit differently. They actually don't have uh, as, as much of the traditional needle in the groove. It's more of a flat thing that goes along the surface and reads it electronically, uh, but otherwise it's still a very similar, uh, very similar format. And they're cool. The one thing that's a downside is these are just cardboard on the outside, and I've already had to kind of glue a little bit of the top of this one here, of Tragedy of W. Uh, it's, so it's not quite as cool as the plastic caddies of the CED, but one nice thing is they come in a really cool little extras here. You get little manuals talking about the movie and that type of stuff. So really interesting here, even though it's not quite as durable, but the actual disc here, it's far better video and sound-wise. Quality-wise, it's much better. It's something that's far more durable. It's not going to wear as much as CED. It'll still wear more than, say, something like an optical media format because there is still contact with the thing that's playing it with the actual disc inside. But it's much more enclosed here. You actually don't 
physically put it in the way you would the first model CEDs. It's more like the later model CED players where everything you put it in and it's automatic, pulls it through and pulls it back in, so it's less of a chance of having actual contact. And I feel like it's much more protected against dust and that type of thing. It feels much more enclosed. So the actual video format is so much better even though the um, actual casings and stuff is not quite as high quality and could be more susceptible to damage. And the other thing too, it's much smaller than a CED. I'm gonna pick one up here. So you have like a CED, I'll put that over here. So it's much smaller, more compact, and it's really cool. There are a lot of really interesting things on here, some stuff you would not expect. Like I said, a lot of anime and stuff, and there's a, there's a video anime magazine that's on there. There's even connections where you connect it to an MSX computer, and you have things like Time Gal and different games on there. So really cool, an awesome thing to add to the collection. Super excited by these. Really, really cool. Again, this is another one of those somewhat obscure video formats that I'd love to have, just a small collection of, just as an example and for the few things that are pretty interesting to have there. So, some really cool pickups, and again, um, as usual this year, I don't know what's been going on, it's completely varied and all over the map of just like obscure awesomeness. So anyway, another great pickups video, even though today itself was pretty disappointing, I can't be disappointed overall because holy cow, look at this absolutely amazing obscure media in every form. But yeah, I'll see you guys next time and make sure you check back every Friday for the weekly laser talk if you're into this type of stuff. And every single week for pickups videos, you know, chinchilla videos, video game videos, what have you.